1883, consisting of Howard Lefevre, son of M. R. Lefevre the Tanner, J. P. Lewis, and J. N. Slocum. They built a pulp mill that year on the south side of the river, where the upper power plant stands. The laps of pulp were taken to the paper mill on a small rail car, and years later, the liquid stock flowed through a pipeline. The pulp mill was torn down in 1937, and in 1912, both J.P. Lewis and J.N. Slocum died, and Mr. Lefevre became the president of the company. In 1918, a dam was built across the river to the north shore to replace the old wooden flume. The mill buildings were made over with concrete, and the machinery was remodeled. A sulfite board was manufactured, used mostly for milk bottle caps. And after Baslin's lumber business on the Black River burned, he returned to Beaver Falls in 1909 and built a paper mill on the old Steinover mill site. When the Baslin estate was settled, the J.P. Lewis Company bought the mill. In 1927, the Lefevre family organized the Beaver Box Manufacturing Company to convert paper into small boxes, large trays, berry baskets, and so forth. They started in the paper mill, then moved to a three-stall garage. In 1930, DeWitt Lefevre became the president of the company, and because of the diverse line of products, changed the name to the Beaverite Products Company in 1933. One product was seal leaks, a paper gasket used by the dairy industry. New buildings were erected, and by 1937, loose leaf binders became the leading product. In 1943, a branch plant was in Glenfield, processed plastic sheets. In 1952, a Krogan plant was added to die-cut gaskets. The company was sold in 1969. This company employs many women. In 1931, the J.P. Lewis Company purchased the Lewis Slocum and Lefever Company, and in 1932, they negotiated with the U.S. Rubber Company to form latex fiber industries. They made layflex used in the shoe industry, and a leather-like product called Lexide. In 1973, the company merged with the J.P. Lewis Company. In 1977, Boise Cascade purchased the entire facilities. In 1959, the Fiber Products Research Center was established by Latex and other companies to develop new materials. They converted the H.S. Lewis residence into laboratories and offices. They were phased out in 1968. The building now houses the Boise Cascade offices. Boise Cascade operates a variety of businesses throughout the country that include paper mills, sawmills, veneer, kitchen and cabinet, factory-built homes and office products and others. Work started on a hydroelectric plant in 1978 on the site of the old Baslin pulp mill, and power was produced in 1979. In 1893, a company moved here from Sandy Creek, nearly forgotten today, a plate factory. It ran four years at the bend of the river near the bridge below the J.P. Lewis Company. They pressed plates from pulp and paper they came here to be near the source of their raw materials. They employed women until 1897 when the buildings burned. In 1903, leading citizens of the area met to consider the idea of building a railroad. They decided a line was needed from Lowville to Krogan to service the industries of Beaver Falls and benefit the entire area. Construction began in 1904 and continued through the following year 
a locomotive, and equipment were purchased, stations built, and on January the 14th, 1906, regular passenger service began. A trestle to serve the mills was put across the river, and in 1912 a spur was extended to the lower mill. Trucks and autos made inroads on the business until the bill business was about all that was left. The company ran it and changed to diesel engines in 1947. Boise Cascade now owns the road. The train comes over daily to service the mills. Over the years, several grocery stores have come and gone. In the mid-1800s, Martin R. Lefevre ran one on the south side of Main Street at the upper bend in the road. In 1907, Owen and Ebersaw bought it and moved it across the street to the north side. On the death of Owen, Charles Riddis became Ebersaw's partner until 1911, when the store burned. Leon Stoddard then became Ebersol's partner and rebuilt. That partnership ended about 1920. The store was run later by Herman Zahn, then Gerald Parker, and finally Frank Alger. The building was torn down and the site made into a parking lot. Charles Neufer and J.P. Lewis went into the store business about 1883, where Neufer later built. In 1893, Neufer built his store, which ran for years. Latex purchased the property in 1969 and tore down the building. Beaverite built an office on the site. Over on the New Bremen side, Rudolf Richner built a store in 1896, managed by Martin McElhern. That store also burned. G.C. Fredenberg started his store about 1913 in the Higby building and moved down into the Crange building in 1914. He was succeeded in business by his son Glenn, whose son John took over. Now three generations of Fredenbergs have run that business on the same site for 72 years and now in July of 1986, they're going out of business. Raymond Hill started his business in a small building next to the Neufer building in 1919. He bought the Higley building and moved his store in. J.P. Lewis Company raised the building in 1969. The newest grocery is Wakefield's General Store on the corner of 26A and the Divinis Road, where Donald Brown had his gas station. In 1854, the citizens of Roars Mills formed an evangelical association, and in 1857, gave Jacob Steinhofer the contract to build a church. That is now the oldest building in Beaver Falls. Services in the early years were given in German. In 1947, they merged and became the evangelical United Brethren Church, and in 1974, a majority of the members opposed a union with the Methodist Episcopal Church. They bought the property and became the Salem Christian Fellowship Church. Thirteen charter members organized the second church in Beaver Falls. Their new building was dedicated in 1890, and in December of 1945, the interior was gutted by fire. Services were held temporarily in the community house until a small chapel was fixed in the part that had escaped the blaze. A campaign was started to raise money to rebuild. DeWitt Lefevre donated the land and a new building was ready for the first service in 1950. In 1968, the name was changed from United Episcopal Methodist Church to the United Methodist Church. In 1870, Charles Dover had built his home on the north side of Upper Main Street. After he moved to a new location, J.N. Slocum bought the property in 1893. 
the house was occupied after his death until 1924. The Lewis Slocum and Lefebvre Company and the J.P. Lewis Company converted the building into a community house. An opening was held in 1926. Mr. and Mrs. Melvin Bush were caretakers until 1943 when he died. Then Mrs. Bush stayed on until 1959. Lucille and Royal Swindy managed until he retired in 1973. The Ken Austins were the last before it was closed for economy reasons. In 1975, the Lewis County Maple Producers Association leased the building and converted it into a museum. After they moved to Crogan, Boise Cascade sold the property and it is now the New Life Fellowship Church. A book club was formed about 1900 and continued until 1914 when a library association was organized. In 1920, the log cabin built for the Red Cross was no longer in use, so it became the library. It was moved to the new community house in 1926, where it stayed until 1985, when again it was moved to the Beaver Inn. Gilbert Higby owned land along the Krogan and Cutoff roads. He built a hotel on the corner where Leon Herzig lives, about 1858. It had several owners over the years, Hilson Stoddard, then William Fredenberg in the 1880s. Beaverite finally tore down the building. In the 1870s and 80s, George Gardner ran a hotel beyond the upper bend of the road toward the river. He ran the livery stable in connection with it. That building burned in 1890. Rudolf Richner built the Hotel Amulus in 1893. In 1907, Mary Joyner, who met this train with his stage, renamed it the Beaver Falls House. He was followed by Andrew McAndrews, then Alec Beaton, and the building was empty when the J.P. Lewis Company bought it and named it Beaver Inn. They ran it until 1975. Charles Messerich bought it. Today some of the apartments are occupied and the library is installed in the large front room. In 1852, Celestia Lewis, at the age of 16, became the teacher in the log school her father had built. And that school was a school until 1857, when replaced with a red frame building. The next school was in the town of New Bremen, east of the Herzig property. That building was replaced in 1885, which served until 1928, when a new brick building was built and dedicated. An expansion and growth caused the district to be centralized in 1945, and new buildings dedicated and erected in 1955. Heavy losses from fires over the years resulted in the formation of a 30-member fire department in 1932. A pumper was purchased by popular subscription and a firehouse built. Over the years, new equipment was added that had to be housed, so the building was enlarged. The department is very active and has served the community well. There's a song entitled Time changes everything. How true that is. Everyone can recall changes in lifestyles and surroundings. There have been many here in Beaver